Does many of that opinion say aye? Aye. aye. Contrary, no. The ayes have it. I beg to move that this House do now adjourn. The question aye. is that this House do now adjourn. Mark Pawson. Thank you, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker, I'm very grateful. I'm very grateful for the opportunity to raise the important topic of police investigations into road traffic deaths, uh, and I'm doing so this evening in support of and in tribute to my constituents George and Julietta Galley Atkinson, who have campaigned tirelessly on road safety over the past 25 years. Mr Deputy Speaker, I first met the Galley Atkinsons shortly after I was elected as the Member of Parliament for Rugby in 2010. Um, the family had recently moved from London to Rugby and they came in to tell me about the awards that they had established in memory of their daughter Livia, who was killed in a road traffic uh, collision in 1998. I remember very well our meeting and as we spoke, I was struck by the very strong commitment that they have to making our roads safer so that other families can be spared the tragedy that they themselves have had to bear. Their daughter, Livia, was born at Chase Farm Hospital in Enfield on the 30th of October 1981. She was growing into a beautiful young woman, thoughtful, studious, hard-working, kind and with a clear understanding of right and wrong. Her hobbies included riding and ballet. She loved Gone with the Wind and had a dry sense of humour. And on the 12th of January 1998, when she was 16 years old, Livia left home one e on the evening at 6.55 to walk to her ballet class due to take place at 7.15 on Windmill Hill in Enfield. As she was walking along the pavement leading to the studio, a car mounted it and careered into her, having first injured another pedestrian. Livia sadly died at the scene at 7.40. At the time of this uh, event, George and Julietta were completely unaware of what had happened. And I remember George telling me how he'd arranged to collect Livia after her class. And on his way there, he saw blue light and he spoke of how the thought crossed his mind that the person, uh, this must be sad for the person uh, whose relatives were being attended by the emergency services. But the case came to trial when the driver was found guilty by a unanimous verdict of the charge of causing death by dangerous driving and that took place on the 6th of November 1998. And I think everybody expected a custodial sentence. The judge, however, considered the case to be borderline with careless driving and accepted the defence last-minute decision not to testify. The judge declared that he saw no benefit in sending the defendant to jail, he having been of previous good character, and said that nor would it serve justice. The defendant received a £2,000 fine 10 points uh, uh, on the licence and a five-year ban from driving. An appeal against this leniency was immediately lodged with the Attorney General by the family and through the Crown Prosecution Service. Since he did not consider the sentence unduly lenient, the Attorney General declined the appeal. So in two, the year 2000, the family took the Attorney General to judicial review on the grounds of unreasonableness. The first attempt failed. At the second attempt, the High Court found that, for the purposes of the hearings, it had been an unduly lenient sentence, and that, while the Attorney General had made an error of judgment in denying the appeal, he had not made an error of law. Still disappointed, in 2002, the family turned to the European Court of Human Rights to test Articles 2, 3, 13 and 14. Again, Livia's case failed. All avenues in the criminal processes having been exhausted, the family turned to civil redress and the civil case succeeded. And I understand that everyone who has read about Livia's case has agreed that the sentence was a very light one. 
Now, the inspiration for an award in Livia's memory arose from the work of the three police officers who were in charge of the case, who were described by George and Julietta as superlative. At that time, there was no public accolade for traffic police officers, and the award was established directly in gratitude to the, those road traffic officers who investigated Livia's case. George and Julietta recognised that they fulfilled the expectations of professional service and integrity, and these criteria were set out to form the criteria and mandate for the Olivia Award. So, Mr Deputy Speaker, it's the case that, through their own experiences, the family have most admirably turned their own grief into something very positive. And the Olivia Award for professionalism and service to justice has grown from an award that was first presented in the Livia Memorial Garden as a memento of personal gratitude into a milestone in the Metropolitan Police's history and its annual agenda. The Memorial Garden in Enfield was opened by the then Member of Parliament for Enfield, Stephen Twigg, who in October 1999, the 100 square metre derelict site adjacent to the pavement where Olivia was killed was transformed into a haven for public use. Stephen remains involved closely with the Olivia Awards to this day. And the award has been endorsed over the years by all of the Prime Ministers since that time, from Tony Blair through to Gordon Brown, to David Cameron, Theresa May, Boris Johnson, along with every single police commissioner since Metropolitan Police Commissioner since 2000, and most especially and significantly by the Metropolitan Police Command and its officers themselves. And the award is made annually to the Metropolitan Police Officer in the Roads and Transport Policing Command Serious Collision Investigation Unit, who is judged to have provided the most meritorious service to road death investigation. And that's either through one specific case, sustained through several investigations, or an officer who has provided the family of a crash victim with outstanding service. I'll happily give way to the Honourable Lady. I'm grateful to the Honourable Member for giving way and can I congratulate him on having secured this adjournment debate and on the incredibly powerful speech he is making. <clears throat> having inquired about some of what goes on behind the scenes when investigating fatal road traffic collisions following a particularly tragic case in my constituency, I know one of the things that particularly distresses families is often the length of time it takes to investigate a collision and the length of time it takes to bring that case to court. Having inquired with West Yorkshire Police who do some fantastic work again and pay tribute to them in the same way that he's doing some of those officers that he's referenced, one of the challenges that it takes three years to train a forensic collision investigator and some of the challenges in getting to those training courses, the provision uh, the capacity to train those officers so that we can all uh, see that we've got enough of the incredibly talented uh, and experienced officers to do this really important work is something that is creating some of those delays. I wonder if he just shares uh, my thoughts that that might be something for the government to look at, to check that we can do that training in a timely fashion to make sure that we've got the numbers of those really special investigators to make sure that we do get justice for those families who were hit the hardest by these tragedies. The Honourable Lady makes some very important and very pertinent points and in my remarks I'll go on to talk about, about some, the work of some of the officers that I've heard about as a, as a judge for the awards and she's right to talk about the specialism of the role and the importance of, uh, of very effective training and the time it takes for officers to uh, achieve that level of expertise. I was going to talk about the criteria for the Livia Awards, and there are three criteria. And the first is service to justice, where outstanding detective ability is displayed. In professionalism, secondly, where there is clearly excellence in the investigation. And finally, the point about service to the families of the victims. Now, the Livia Awards held its 25th anniversary in November last year, and I'm very proud to have been asked to be part of the judging panel uh, over recent years. And it's worth 
pointing out that the panel has throughout the 25 years been independent of the Metropolitan Police and indeed independent of George and Julietta. It's made up of professionals and former professionals, including solicitors and barristers, a former court reporter for a major newspaper, former senior police officers, uh, and usually a member of the House of Lords and a member of Parliament. And also significant that nominations are made by colleagues of officers involved in the service, those involved in the investigation of serious road transport collisions. And the nominations are made initially in writing, followed by interviews with those who are nominated. And in reading those accounts, and I come on to the points of the Honourable Lady, and hearing from the nominees each year, I've been struck by the professionalism and the service to justice that each of the candidates portrayed. Um, I've read and heard face-to-face uh, -face accounts from police officers who have had to attend the most harrowing of incidents. And particularly interesting to me as a provincial MP from a small town in the Midlands uh, to understand some of the challenges uh, involved in policing in a capital as large and as sophisticated as London. Often the people who have to pick up pieces and bring families together are the police officers themselves and I've heard a great deal from family liaison officers. That's a role I hadn't heard of at all before my involvement be before my involvement with the Olivia Awards. I have to say, being a member of the panel has given me an insight into a world that I would not have otherwise seen. And I want to provide a flavour of the calibre of the candidates, the kind of work they've had to do, through a couple of case studies from this year's awards. And the first uh, case study I'd like to refer to is that of the 2023 Livia of your award winner, Detective Constable Davina Nash. D DC Nash was the collision investigator for a serious injury collision that took place in Acton in London in June 2021. This collision resulted in potentially life-changing injury injuries to a two and a half year old girl. This young girl was with her mother and brother crossing a major road where there was a pedestrian crossing and they were crossing on the green light for pedestrians. She was on a two toy scooter when, despite the signal being read for traffic, with a, a stream of stationary cars waiting for the signals to change, a mope, moped rider approached the crossing at speed, overtook those stationary cars and collided with the little girl who was part way across the crossing. Her injuries were so severe that medical staff thought she would die or would be left with a severe brain injury. And DC Nash had to pick up the pieces as family liaison, liaison officer for the family and she carried out a meticulous and thorough investigation and her work led to a successful prosecution for causing serious injury by, dry, by dangerous driving, driving whilst uh, over the cannabis limit with no driving licence and with no insurance. The judge imposed the maximum sentence possible after a guilty plea reduction and that it was a 42 months imprisonment. The judge in the case commented that the sentence was nowhere near high enough given the gravity of the little girl's injuries. A second case is again a 2023 Liver Award nominee, Police Constable Ed Raymond. And on Sunday the 10th of July 2022, a fatal road traffic collision occurred in New Kent Road in Southwark. The 24-year-old driver involved was unlicensed and at almost twice the drink drive limit when the car he was driving smashed into a pedicab, throwing the passenger from the vehicle and killing her. And the driver of the rickshaw uh, sustained life-changing injuries. PC Raymond once again was employed as a family liaison officer, su such an important role, and went to extraordinary lengths to support the victim's family. In this case, the defendant pleaded guilty to causing death by dangerous driving and another number of other offences and was sentenced to just over nine years in November 2022. However, 
In the first of its kind, the case was reviewed by the Attorney General and an unduly lenient sentence appeal was heard at the Royal Courts of Justice in January 2023. This was due to the changes in sentencing guiding, guidelines for death by dangerous driving, which came into force in June 2022. And the appeal resulted in the first stated case and the sentence was increased by a third. And of course then, the driver of the vehicle is now serving 12 years in prison. PC Raymond's role was to ensure that the victim's family were fully supported throughout and he was able to establish a very special relationship with them. A year on from the collision, he joined the family in raising over £9,000 for various charities, one of which is Break, who provides support for bereaved families who have lost loved ones in road traffic collisions. I give those cases as examples of the uh, severity of the cases that officers are having to deal with. And George and Julieta haven't initiated these uh, awards over 25 years uh, just for the sake of the awards, but they've also fought tirelessly for more appropriate punishment by those found guilty of causing death by dangerous driving. And on both fronts, they have been incredibly successful. And it's been an honour to work alongside the Galley Atkinsons to see how their energy and dedication to road safety has inspired and changed the work of police in this area. And as a consequence of their pressure, there are now three specialist units within the Metropolitan Police. Firstly, the Roads and Transport Policy Command. Secondly, the Serious Collision Investigation Unit. And thirdly, the Forensic uh, Collision Investigation Units, all working tirelessly on this vision to achieve safer roads and fairer sentencing. The Roads and Transport Policing Command is the largest operational command unit in the Metropolitan Police. And working in partnership with Transport for London, their focus is to deny criminals use of the roads and to reduce serious injury and road deaths within London. The roads policing teams work 24-7, 365 days a year, responding to serious and fatal collisions and incidents, as well as targeting collision hotspots and educating road users. And education is a theme that George and Julietta have picked up and they've been involved with many successful campaigns and programmes and also they've supported road safety charities such as Road Peace, Break and Victim Support. I'd like to refer particularly to Safe Drive Stay Alive. In 2008, George helped to set up Safe Drive Stay Alive in Enfield and the positive feedback grew more, as more and more London boroughs became interested in delivering that brand of road safety education, a range that people it was important to influence, learner drivers, in their sixth form, sixth form years. This programme, initiated by George, eventually covered 19 London boroughs, working in partnership with councils, emergent services and the roads police. As the local MP in rugby, I'm delighted that the programme was introduced in my constituency in 2017, uh, George and Julietta having come up to the Midlands when funding was provided by the Warwickshire Chief Constable. I I've seen that Safe Drive Stay Alive is a professional, high impact and effective stage show. The objective of this road safety initiative is to show uh, young people easily influenced uh, why as young drivers, they and their passengers are so vulnerable in their early years on the road and to show them what they can do to reduce their, the, the, their, this vulnerability. And I have absolutely no doubt that these messages have saved lives. George has also been involved in Learn to Live in Hertfordshire, a similar initiative to Stay, stay Safe Drive, Stay Alive, which reached over 7,000 students during its duration, and he was subsequently asked in 2019 with, by the Ministry of Defence to become involved with their road safety initiative, Survive the Drive, in London in Surrey. And on the matter of legislation over the 25 years, 
George and Juliet have contributed to countless public consultations on road safety, legislation and enforcement, and, and had her influence uh, uh, has, has borne fruit. Uh, in 2011, the, the former member for Enfield Southgate, David Burrows, who himself was a judging, member, judging panel member for a number of years and worked closely with George and Julietta, he successfully campaigned for a change to the dangerous driving legislation, which ensured that the maximum sentencing was increased to five years. And to this day, the couple are campaigning on both sides of the House to ensure that the road safety investigation branch that the government promised will come to fruition. And I'm delighted to say that in 2023, for the first time, and after much campaigning in which George and Julietta have been instrumental, roads policing was included by the Home Office in its strategic uh, policing requirement. And I note from paragraph 166 that, I quote, roads policing is responsible for the enforcement of traffic laws, detection, deterrence, and the response to illegal or dangerous activity on the roads. Roads policing capabilities play an essential role in tackling the use of the roads network by terrorist threats and serious and organised criminals involved in county lines, drug transportation, modern slavery and human trafficking. They are also essential in managing incidents caused by public disorder or civil emergencies. Mr Deputy Speaker, I hope you'll see how George and Julietta are truly an inspiration and how their energy and commitment to road safety, fair sentencing and proper recognition of outstanding police officers in this area of policing deserves high recognition and praise. I think rugby is incredibly lucky to have such, two such people in our midst and it has been my honour to have been invited to join Julietta in getting involved in the Olivia Awards. I found it inspirational and also deeply challenging to learn about the work of road collision investigators within the police service, sometimes within the service a role which is overlooked but is so vital to those in the pursuit of justice for those affected by road traffic incidents. And I think that the work which Ju George and Julietta have done to maintain the high profile of the Livery Awards throughout 25 years has done so much to highlight this really valuable role within policing and has recognised many police officers who I have seen go above and beyond the call of duty in support of families such as that of the Galley Atkinsons. Thank you. Police Minister, Chris Phil. Thank you, Sir Roger. Let me start by congratulating my honourable friend, the Member for Rugby, for securing this adjournment debate. Every road traffic death is a tragedy, and I strongly echo what he has said already about the impact on those affected which road traffic deaths have. And I'd like to add my own thanks to his, to the police, for the excellent work they do up and down the country every day to keep our roads safe, but also to respond to fatal and serious road traffic incidents where they occur. These are often extraordinarily distressing incidents, but it is the role of the police to investigate in a clear-minded and thorough way. Those investigations can often be complex and technical, but the public rightly expect the police to undertake them. I would like to convey my deepest sympathy to my honourable friend's constituents, George and Juletta Galley Atkinson, for the tragic loss of their daughter, Livia. I've been very moved, as I'm sure we all have, by the description the Honourable Member for Rugby has given of the work that family has done since the tragic death of their daughter in trying to bring some good out of an awful personal tragedy. And I'd like to put on record my sincere thanks to George and Juletta for the work they have done these last 25 years uh, to promote and campaign for road traffic safety, uh, including the work they've done in establishing and perpetuating the Livia Award for Professionalism and Service to Justice, which has played, as the Honourable Member for Rugby has said, such an important role in highlighting the work that 
collision investigators and family liaison officers do, trying to bring some answers following tragedy and looking after the families in their hour of darkness as best they can. Police officers up and down the country on a daily basis show enormous commitment and dedication in responding to fatal road traffic incidents, and it's right that their efforts are recognised. And I, I would again like to just thank the Galley Atkinsons for what they've done to support and promote this work, to campaign for road safety. Uh, what they have done, I think, has truly made a difference over the last 25 years, as the member for rugby has set out. And they should be incredibly proud that they've shown such courage and fortitude and de determination to bring such good out of what would otherwise what is a terrible tragedy. And of course, many families um, respond that way. I'm sure as constituency members of parliament uh, and also in my role as Minister for Police and Crime, we very often meet families whose lives have been touched by tragedy. Uh, and often they do respond, as the Galley Atkinson family have, by trying to bring some good out of their tragedy to help other people who find themselves in the same situation. And I think it's very important that we as members of parliament and ministers um, listen very carefully to what those families have to say who have had these terrible experiences to make sure that we in parliament and government can learn from them. And I'd like to repeat my thanks to the Galley Atkinson family for their campaigning, which does make a difference. It has made a difference and their voice has absolutely been heard. Uh, Sir Roger, um, let me just go on to make one or two more general remarks about uh, road safety. Uh, it is, of course, a priority uh, for the government. We continue to work to make our roads safer. Britain's roads are amongst the safest in the world, but we're not complacent. In 2022, sadly, there were 1,711 fatal road collisions, each one a life cut short. And we need to make sure we do everything we can to make our roads safer, to tighten the law where it needs to be tighter, to make sure uh, that accidents are firstly avoided, but secondly, where a driver, through carelessness, dangerousness, recklessness, or driving under the influence of drugs or drink, uh, are brought to justice, and families can see uh, justice being done and the deterrent effect those sentences have can be felt across society. Uh, and while we do have very safe roads compared to many other countries, the work is certainly not done. There is more to do. And I know that working uh, with members uh, on both sides of the House, uh, but especially members whose constituents, uh, like the Honourable Member for Rugby, have experienced tragedy, listening especially to them and to their experiences, um, I know that we can do uh, even more, and all of us will work together to make sure that happens. The question is that this House to stand adjourned. As many of that opinion say aye. Aye. The contrary, no. The ayes have it. Order, order. The proceeding has ended. 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 The proceeding has ended.
The proceeding has ended. The proceeding has ended. The proceeding has ended. The proceeding has ended. The proceeding has ended. The proceeding has ended. The proceeding has ended. The proceeding has ended. The proceeding has ended. The proceeding has ended. The proceeding has ended. The proceeding has ended. The proceeding has ended. The proceeding has ended. The proceeding has ended. The pro proceeding has ended. The 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 proceeding has ended. The